Hi everyone, uh, I'm Yixin Wang from Columbia University. I'm going to be telling you about frequentist consistency of variational beta's, but we show you the variational beta's consistent asymptotic and normal. So this is a joint work with my advisor, Professor Dave Bly, Columbia University. So just to set up the notations, um, the key task in the Bayesian inference to infer the posterior, where we start with the probability model, which is a joint distribution with this link variable theta and some data x. And we infer the posterior, which is a conditional distribution, which can be written at this quotient uh, between this joint probability distribution, uh, joint probability and the marginal probability of x. And this marginal probability of x can be written as an integral. For the most interesting models that we work with nowadays, this integral is computationally intractable. So we need approximate Bayesian inference. One of the classical choice to do approximate Bayesian inference is to do Markov chain Monte Carlo, but in this talk we're going to be focusing on variational Bayes. Um, the variational Bayes solve uh, practicing the posterior by solving an optimization problem, where we start with positing an approximating family, which includes all factorizable densities. And then we find the member within this family that is closest to the exact posterior. So imagine we have this ellipsoid that includes all the factorizable densities. We initialize ourselves within and do a lot of optimization steps until we get to a point that is closest to this exact posterior on the upper left. Yeah. Um, and we take this optima as uh, we'll take this optima as the variational Bayes posterior. And this this is the classical very vanilla mean field variational Bayes. Um, and this will be the focus of our talk today. So variational bias has been used in a lot of model probabilistic models, for example, in mixture models uh, or in generalized linear mixed models um, for group data, for example, and in stochastic block models when we try to uncover hidden communities in a large network or in mixed membership models um, where topic models and like Dirichlet allocation are just examples of that. However, there are a few theoretical guarantees in the literature around variational Bayes. Uh, from 2000 and up until 2017, many researchers have shouted out to this community that we need some theoretical characterization around variational Bayes. So today we come with this work that try to fill in some theory for variational Bayes, where we show, do an asymptotic, we study the asymptotic property, properties of variational Bayes, establishing the consistency and asymptotic normality. So just a quick recap, we have this um, ellipse uh, that includes all the factorizable densities in the approximating family, and we find the member within this family that is closest to the exact posterior. And in final samples, um, this exact posterior lies outside of our approximating family. Um, that's because there is no reason to believe our exact posterior will be factorizable, so it almost always lies outside of our approximating family. And that means, in final example, there really is no hope to get back to, to recover this exact posterior because we're, the, this exact posterior is outside of the optimization domain. There is no way to recover it. However, the next question we ask is what if we have infinite data? So this whole thread of theoretical work starts from this curious experiments on topic models where we consider what well, we have an infinite number of documents. Um, we start with this topic model, which involves latent variables as topics, and we observe the word occurrences, word occurrences in documents. Um, for, for those of you who are not familiar with topic model, you can just consider it as a uh, very complicated generating process from topics up until um, the word occurrences. And we ask, what if we have infinite data? What if we have an infinite number of documents? So what we did was to start by fixing the topics as some true values, and then generate, the, generate a number of documents. And then we go back to infer the posterior of the topics given the simulated data. So imagine, oh, no matter what we do, imagine we have a proper posterior inference algorithm, we, we would have the posterior inferred from the simulated data coincide with the true value that we started with. Like if we can't recover the truth but with the simulated data, they're really, the, this method doesn't, doesn't work. So, so we did precisely the thing on, on topic models. We fixed the topics to generate the documents and then um, try to infer the posterior of the topics given the simulated documents. And here's what we see in this, in this particular experiment. Uh, the x-axis is the size of the data set, uh, which is the number of documents. As we move right, we have more and more documents. That means we have larger and larger data sets. 
And on the y-axis, we have um, the distance between the incorrect posterior and the truth. So uh, we did this experiment with Stan. That means uh, we subjected some computational constraints. But in, in, this particular, in this particular experiment, the dark blue lines are for variational bias, and the blank blue lines are Hamilton and Monte Carlo. And in, in here, we can see variational bias converges to the truth faster than MCMC. And we would know that MCMC is well theoretically guaranteed, and we think same, the same guarantee really should exist for variational bias. Um, of course, we did the similar experiments uh, on other models as well. Um, we don't always observe variational bias converges faster, but it, it does converge uh, to the truth in, in a wide range of models. So today, we come up with a theorem that tells you this is always the case. Um, so here's the main theorem in plain English. We start with a model with latent and observed variables, and we simulate data from this model with latent variables fixed to the true value, and we consider the posterior of the latent variables given the simulated data. So this is precise the setting we did with the experiments. And the main theorem, what we call the variational bernstein malmese theorem, comes with the four statements. We, we know that the, we can say that the variational base posterior is consistent in terms of it, the variational base posterior converges in distribution to a point back to the true value. It, it is also asymptotically nor normal, um, meaning the variational base posterior, if properly recentered and rescaled, it converges in total variation distance to a normal distribution. We can also establish consistency and asymptotic normality for the variational base estimate, which is a point estimate computed as the mean of the variational base posterior. And uh, consistency means it converges to the true value almost surely, and after properly rescaling and recentering, it converges the distribution uh, to a normal distribution. In our paper, we apply it to um, several, several specific models, like generalized linear mixed models, mixture models, and stochastic block models, um, uh, just to characterize the asymptotic properties of variational bias posterior we, uh, we got from these specific models, and in general, use variational bias in this class of models uh, was more confident. So by now, you probably are wondering why this is ever true. So if there's one slide that, that I want you to pay attention to, this is the slide. So why is the variational bias posterior consistent? The intuition here is, is as more and more data comes in, the exact posterior will contract in the sense that we have more and more data, we have more and more evidence uh, about our estimation, we are more and more confident about our estimation, so the posterior variance will shrink until it will shrink converges to a point mass of the truth. And the interesting thing about the point mass are the point masses are factorizable. So the exact posterior, which are the point masses in the limit, actually sits within our variational family that we started with. Uh, we, pass, we, uh, we, we, we set out our variational family as the factorizable densities. So if we look at this picture, we still have this ellipsoid ellipse, including all factorizable densities. And what happens is if we have one data point, our exact posterior may be far out there. And have, and we, if we get more and more data points, our exact posterior will actually move closer and closer to our approximating family. And once we have infinite data, this exact posterior will come into our approximating family and so that uh, we can recover the truth in, with infinite data. So this is precisely why the variation of a base posterior can recover, can recover the truth in the limit. So now I want to give a little more technical details about our variational bernstein malmese theorem. We need three main technical assumptions. First of all, being prior mass, we need our prior to include the true value of the latent variable. If a priori, we know that this true value is not possible, we're not able to get it back. Um, the second assumption is consistent testability, meaning roughly means with infinite data, our models is, is identifiable. And the last assumption is local asymptotic normality, uh, it roughly means about the true value our model can be approximable by a normal model. Um, this is actually a mild assumption in that for a lot of, for, for second order differentiable models, um, we can just do second order Taylor expansion at the truth and we can have, we, we, are, we already have this normal approximation. So these three assumptions um, actually ensure the consistency and asymptotic normality of the exact posterior. 
So, uh, and to prove alternative for variational bays, we don't, we didn't require any extra technical con technical conditions. So that means, um, as long as the base posterior is properly behaving, our variational base posterior is going to be consistent as the like normal. <coughs> so going to the main statements of our theorem, uh, the first statement about the consistency of variational base posterior. Again, we start with this model of p x given theta, where p is a data and theta is a latent variable. We simulate data id from this density by fixing this latent variable as the true value of theta zero. And we consider the variational base posterior by minimizing this scale divergence between ourselves and the exact posterior. <coughs> so under the mild technical conditions I just mentioned, the variational base posterior is consistent in the sense it converges to a point best of the truth in distribution. We can also establish asymptotic normality by considering a slightly transformed version of the latent variable. We need to recenter it the truth, rescale it by proper rate, and then we consider um, the variational base posterior of this transformed, transformed latent variable. We can say the total variation between this variational base posterior and a normal distribution will converge to zero in probability. But we notice here there are two constants where we have delta and v here. These are both model-dependent constants, meaning whenever you hand me a model, I'll be able to compute it for you based on a theorem. And then we can establish properties for the variational base estimate, which is the mean of the variational base posterior. And under these uh, technical assumptions we just stated, the variational Vegas estimate is consistent. It converges to the truth almost shortly. And lastly, uh, we can recenter this variational Vegas posterior at the truth and rescale up by a proper rate. It'll converge to zero mean random, normal random variable. Uh, I want, also want to um, remind that this scaling rate, although model can in low dimensional parametric models, uh, we often have it taken the value of one of our root n, which gives us the root n consistency that we have seen in a lot of theorems. So before I wrap up my talk, I want to mention some related work, uh, which we are highly inspired by. Um, there are a few model-specific results on variational approximations, um, including those on linear models, Poisson mixed effects models, the cast of block models and um, mixture of Gaussian models, and this work provides a general guarantee, general asymptotic guarantee for variational Bayes, uh, and it offers a general recipe for to analyze a large collection, uh, large collection of models. So, for the more interested people, uh, welcome to check out our archive campaign, where we address more complicated problems like what if the number of latent variables increases with it, with the data size, or what about a different uh, approximating family, how to apply this main theorem to specific models, and what happens in practice. So, to wrap up, in this work, we present a general asymptotic theorem, uh, asymptotic guarantee for variational Bayes. We show that the variational Bayes posterior is consistent and asymptotically normal. Uh, we can also show the variational Bayes estimate, which is the mean of the variational Bayes posterior, is consistent and asymptotically normal. And the takeaway message is, uh, if you're not yet a variational Bayes user uh, and worry about the theoretical guarantees, we now have some asymptotic property. We have studied the uh, asymptotic properties and welcome to give it a try. If you're a very variational Bayes user, keep doing what you're doing, you're the best. <laughs> um, that's all my talk and uh, I'd be happy to take any questions. So this is great work. I just wanted to, for the related work section, I think uh, some very work, very early work by Hagai Atias in 1999. He showed, you know, sort of like he's a physicist, not a statistician. In a sort of physics-y way, he, he talked about the asymptotic uh, <coughs> convergence to maximum likelihood. Um, but obviously, this is a much, much uh, deeper, more thorough understanding of the convergence. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, let's check offline so that I have the citations ready. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so maybe the obvious question. So uh, what happens if the model is misspecified? So this is already an issue with normal Bayesian inference. So now there's an extra layer of complication due to the variational approximation. Do you have any results on that? Uh, I haven't developed any results on that, but this is a great question. And um, we can, like, 
I believe similar results is doable in the sense that for the classical ones like Mamisi theorem, Mikko and Klein and Chen Chou, um, they already have characterized Bernstein Mamisi theorem under model of specification. Uh, we I just want to write that um, to do to they can also obtain some certain level of consistency as in time normal, uh, but the requirement on the say the level of model misspecification mis and the result whether you can recover the truth or recover the uh, minimum. Uh, like the optimal KL minimizer, like uh, there are a lot of nuancing that in, uh, so that the result wouldn't be as clean as we have shown today. But these kind of results is definitely doable. There are uh, classical characterization of the Bernstein Mamisi theorem under model misspecification. Yeah, thank you. Okay, there's one more question. Yeah, uh, I think you have a question. Yeah, great talk, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, uh, this is, um, I, I don't know, maybe an obvious question, but. I'm thinking about the standard Bernstein hypothesis theorem. Um, and there you have like the Fisher information, right? Um, and intuitively, if the, the posterior family is factorized, the Fisher information isn't, um, then that, that might suggest there was some difficulty there. So could you contrast with the sort of standard theorem? Yeah, this is a fantastic question. Um, so as you have correctly predicted, uh, although I like slip, like I slip through the details, I, I just say they're model-dependent constants. In fact, they are under dispersed. We have theorems in our paper that show uh, the entropy uh, of the variance estimated by estimated from the variational base posterior is smaller than the uh, entropy of the true exact variational base posterior. So there are uh, two fixes. I mean, our work is. Uh, kind of stays in the theoretical analysis of variation, like the vanilla variational Bayes method. Um, there are modern, more recent work on variational Bayes method to try to correct this. One way to do this is to expand the approximating family so that it can, it can accommodate these dependencies and modeling variables. Um, I believe many people here in our lab have done, and outside our lab have done work on that. Another way to characterize um, getting the uh, exact uh, like getting the right covariance is to, uh, I've seen recent work by Brian Giordano in my journal's group um, on um, using Bayesian, Bayesian sensitivity analysis uh, to characterize the correct covariance. And in there, they needed um, some kind of good approximate, like they need variational Bayes to give a good approximation of the mean, um, and so that their Bayesian sensitivity estimate will work. And I believe our theorem will uh, kind of echo this kind of result. It will help, like, um, help in justifying using that kind of method. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.